Well, my friends, we will continue our study of social learning theory by ending this series through the, in the examination of the implications of social learning theory. I have a quote down here from my grandfather that says, if you plan to go on a journey, choose the best route. Uh, I recall him telling me that years ago he was teaching me how to drive. Uh, the first thing he did was fuss at me for going too slow. He told me there was a peg-legged man pushing a wheelbarrow trying to pass me. Uh, that's why I drive so fast today. And uh, I don't know, the highway patrols don't share his opinion. The other thing he did is when I missed the road, he just got all over me. You choose the best route, choose the best route, choose the best route. Social learning theory doesn't explain all things. It doesn't fit every, sec every situation, but it is indeed useful in many of the routes and may be the tool of interest to you as you try to accomplish specific learning. Now, social learning focuses on learning that comes from observing others. The theory points out that humans are social beings and that we tend to follow the herd. Uh, it also promotes the idea that we learn from observation and we, intimidate, we, we imitate those behaviors deemed important to achieving our objectives and likewise promotes the concept of self-determination and the consequences of behavior play a role in learning. We, we are social creatures. We like belonging to the herd. We want to belong to the right herd, but we want to belong to the herd. Now, in, in we observe behaviors, and we look at those things that help you fit in the herd, and we look at those things that block you out of the herd, and we tend to, to imitate those that help us fit into the herd. Now, we're going to examine some of the educational implications of social learning theory, which include the following. We will look at six of these. The first is that students often learn a great deal by observing other people. Now, when I say other people, I want you to understand that it's not that students just observe teachers. Students observe their peers. Students observe uh, other adults. They observe their parents. They observe television characters. They observe athletes. And there, there's a myriad of hosts of those that students will observe. If you really recognize the power of observation, then you will recall the concept of getting their attention. Get them focused on observing those that, that model the behaviors that are appropriate. Now, describing the consequences of behavior can effectively increase appropriate behaviors and decrease inappropriate behaviors. Uh, the, uh, you can describe it verbally. You can illustrate it by the rules and the, and the method and the way in which you conduct yourself. But uh, the consequences of behavior uh, when, when, uh, will, can, can help someone learn what is appropriate and also help them learn what is inappropriate. Uh, another deal that is important is that modeling provides an alternative to shaping for teaching new behaviors. Shaping, of course, is a behavioristic approach. Uh, modeling doesn't answer all problems, but modeling answers some problems. And one of the, the things that you discover in the theory of expertise is that the, the, the expert has many tools in the box, where the novice doesn't have many tools. Modeling is a tool to keep in your box that you can use to uh, teach new behaviors. It is an alternative to the behavioristic approach. Uh, another one is that teachers and parents must model appropriate behaviors and take care that they don't model inappropriate ones. Well, I, there's a lot of implication to this in, in how teachers conduct themselves, what teachers do, uh, also in what parents do and how parents conduct themselves. That's one aspect of it. We don't want to walk around under the mindset of do as I say and instead of do as I do. We also rec need to recognize that as teachers and parents that we, we reward uh, the right behaviors consistently, and we need to see that we, we uh, put consequences on the inappropriate behaviors consistently. I was in Walmarts the other day, and, and you know, I was thinking about this modeling and kind of had to lay it out in my mind how I might build this. And I look, of course, you know, one of the standard things is a little child throwing a temper tantrum, wanting what they want. Now, how many of you parents hadn't lived through that? Uh, my, my daughter uh, saw another child do that in Walmart's, and the next time she went to Walmart, she pulled it. 
Of course, it didn't work as effectively for her as it did for the one she saw, but this little child was throwing a fit, and my gracious, the mother just went ballistic. She was ranting, raving, carrying on, and I thought, I, I don't know which one of you is throwing the worst temper tantrum, the, the child or the mother. I certainly think the mother was old enough to have known better. Now, if, if you want your child to be compassionate, model compassion, if you want your child to be... Uh, to, to, to walk in an upright manner, then walk in an upright manner yourself. If you want your child to have constraint, then practice constraint yourself. But it reward compassion, re reward constraint, re reward appropriate behaviors consistently. I, I hate to have to quote uh, Judge Parker, the hanging judge in, uh, in uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, but he was quoted as saying it's not the severity of of the punishment, but the certainty of it that deters crime. I don't know. That might be a pretty good quote. You could make it positive. It is not. It is not the 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 uh, greatness of the reward, but the certainty of it that encourages the appropriate behavior. Uh, students must believe that they're capable of accomplishing tasks, and expectations must be realistic. If I could underline anything in these uh, videos. It is that expectations must be realistic. Uh, my gracious, we, we as, as, as teachers and adults and parents, we get some of the most unrealistic expectations for, for younger people that, that, that we could possibly have. Uh, I'm constantly reminding folks that my little granddaughter, the, my, the middle one, is only three. And even though she's big for size and she's very precarious and she knows everything that's going on and she talks at a higher level, she's still only three. And our expectations ought to be those for a three-year-old. For for one that is ten, the expectations ought to be for those that one that ten. When our expectations are too high, then students lose hope that they can accomplish those expectations. And and then then what are they going to do? Uh, they're, they're not going to try, they're going to give up. And the same is true for us. If the expectations are not realistic, we, we will give up. Students have to believe that they're capable of accomplishing the task in order for modeling to be effective. Uh, Self-regulation techniques also provide effective methods for improving behaviors. Uh, external regulation is certainly nowhere near as effective as self-regulation. And effective educators, in my opinion, develop strategies for self-regulation. Uh, I teach a, a doctoral statistics class, and uh, I do that uh, for uh, folks who are pursuing, say, a, a doctorate in ed ed or a doctorate in higher ed administration. And, and uh, they, I, I give them their test. I give them a sample test. I let them test in groups. I let them help each other. And then they'll come ask me, well, what did we miss? And they get mad when I say, well, what did you miss? Why don't you tell me? Take notes, work with your groups, and take charge of your learning. Now, they'll hate me in the first week of the class, but by the end, and they've learned how to work in groups and regulate themselves, then, then you know, they may, not, they may still hate me, but they certainly have grown. We want to instill self-regulation in the heart of the learner. Self-regulation exceeds uh, external regulation by a thousand and a million fold. Self-regulation techniques are important to providing effective methods for improving behaviors. Again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. I, I really appreciate your taking time to watch these four videos that have developed on social learning theory. While social learning theory doesn't have all the answers, I want to reinforce to you that I don't have all the answers either. I've just shared with you some of my views and some of my visions about Bandera's work. I certainly encourage you to spend more time looking at other sources. Expand your toolbox of resources as you look at social learning theory. It is a fascinating theory that has a lot of good things with it. I'm going to end with the old Vulcan dismissal from the old Star Trek, live long and prosper. And of course, if you meet a Vulcan, the correct response is peace and long life. Have a blessed day.